It's been over 10 years since electronic water meters were introduced in the U.S. for residential applications. Many of my customers are using electronic water meters for commercial and industrial applications. However, the number of utilities adopting electronic water meters for residential applications continues to grow, but is still only a small percentage of the utilities. As an interesting comparison, think about what happened in the electric utility industry in the early 2000s. That industry moved from electromechanical to electronic meters almost overnight. Today we're going to discuss the differences between the two types of meters, electronic and mechanical meters, and provide you with some practical guidance on choosing the right type for your utility. Let's dive into it. Welcome to the Smart Water Show, brought to you by Badger Meter. I'm your host, Maurice Blackwell, and this is the show where we discuss your day-to-day -day water utility problems and find the most effective technology solution for you. Let's start with talking about mechanical meters today. There are four primary types of mechanical meters being used for residential applications. Positive displacement nutating disc, positive displacement oscillating piston, single jet, and multi-jet meters. The first two are positive displacement, meaning that they actually measure the volume of water. In the case of a nutating disc, it's much like filling and emptying a cup. So if I have a cup that has a known volume, is very much like the chamber inside, and as I fill that, it's going to empty, and then I fill it again and I know the overall volume. The last two types of meters, the single jet and multi-jet, those are inferential meters, meaning that they actually measure the velocity of the water, and then they infer that into a volumetric number. Well, what could be said about mechanical meters? Well, they're field proven. They've been around for many, many years. They're relatively inexpensive. They're easy to explain how they work to your customers. They don't have a battery to deal with, maybe in the encoder, but the meter itself doesn't have a battery. When discussing procurement of meters, most utilities today simply put out a general specification and purchase the lowest cost meter. The point that I do want to make here today is that all mechanical meters are not created equal. They all do share two common traits. Trait number one is their technologies allow them to very accurately measure intermediate and high flows. Where mechanical meters all somewhat struggle is measuring the very low flows, low flows that are outside of the normal operating range. There was a very interesting study that was done, I believe in 2009, by three researchers from Utah State. And this was sponsored by the Water Research Foundation. What they wanted to study was, how do mechanical meters operate outside of the normal operating range? Now we know they're not going to be accurate plus or minus a percent and a half, but how do they operate? So they took five different types of meters, the four kinds that we discussed here, positive displacement, nutating disc, oscillating piston, single jet, multi-jet, and they also included fluidic oscillators. They studied these meters using flows that were very low, 1 64th of a gallon, 1 32nd, 1 16th, and so on. What they showed was this, at the 164th, most meters don't operate, but the positive displacement nutating disc meter started to register some flow. When it moved to 132nd, the only meters that were really starting to measure a significant amount of flow, not plus or minus a percent and a half, but that 60 to 70% accuracy was the positive displacement nutating disc. What that means for you is when your customers have these very small flows, leaks and drips, you're going to collect some revenue there. With the other meters, they're st still stuck at zero, not collecting anything. So I was very proud of this study when it came out because it really showed that a positive displacement nutating disc is really the best type of mechanical meter. Trait number two regarding mechanical meters are that they are mechanical devices, meaning that they do wear over time. Now, normally the wear is proportional to the quality of your water. That normal wear affects the very low flows that we talked about, which again translates directly into lost revenue. Let's transition our discussion into the overview of electronic or static meters. 
There are three primary types of electronic meters used in residential applications, the first of which is the ultrasonic meter. Now, the ultrasonic meter is an inferential meter that measures the velocity of water through sound waves. The second type of meter is a magmeter, which uses Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction to measure the velocity of the water. The third type of electronic meter is a fluidic oscillator which uses the frequency of oscillations to measure the velocity of water. What could be said about electronic meters? Well, they have no moving parts, which means no wear, and having no wear means no accuracy degradation over time. They're basically a maintenance-free meter. They have no continuous maximum duty limit, and the accuracy and functionality of these meters are not affected by particulates in the water, like sand or pipe corrosion. These things are typically seen in utilities that have aged infrastructure and they have a high number of water main breaks, which introduces particulates into the water stream. For that very reason, electronic meters don't require a filter or a strainer. Another point to think about is the ability of an electronic meter to very accurately measure very low flows. However, for these capabilities, today you're still paying somewhat of a premium for electronic meters as compared to mechanical meters. Well, let's conclude here by giving some practical advice on where and when to use electronic meters. If you're an age system where you're going to have many main breaks and you're going to introduce sand and particulates into your water stream, I would recommend an electronic meter. The other application where I really love an electronic meter is a residential fire service application. The reason I say that is this. For most residential fire service, you're upsizing the line, maybe from a 5 8 or a 3 quarter to a 1 inch line. But when you put a normal mechanical 1 inch meter, it doesn't have the low flow capabilities as that 5 8 or 3 quarter. So you might actually lose revenue on the low side. However, if you look at an electronic meter, even at a one inch size, you're going to accurately measure those very low flows. So you're not going to lose revenue in those cases. If you've heard nothing else I said today, the last point that I wanna leave you with is this. The best gauge to determine if electronic meters are right for your utility is your own meter testing. Looking at your testing history, of accuracy over time, it will paint a very clear picture if you need to make a change. If you're pulling mechanical meters regularly and seeing a premature degradation of accuracy, one of three things could be said. One, you may need to analyze your current change out frequency and make an adjustment according to that historical meter accuracy curve shown from your testing or change to an electronic meter that, so you can assure yourself that you're gonna have long-term sustainable accuracy over that life of the meter. Number two, you've possibly installed an inferior mechanical meter. You may need to consider a different type of mechanical meter or an electronic meter. Number three, your water quality is hard on the mechanical meter that you've installed. This may be another reason to look at an electronic meter that won't be affected by your water quality. If you have any questions about today's topic, feel free to ask a question in the comment section below. I'd be happy to provide you with an answer. Or if you'd rather send a private message or have a question related to metering or meter reading systems that I can help you with, be sure to connect with me on LinkedIn. Our question of the day, are you using electronic water meters for residential applications? Why or why not? Please leave your feedback in the comment section below. If you found value in this content, be sure to click the like button, but stay tuned for our next episode where we're going to feature a very special guest that has a powerful message for any utility looking to make a technology change. We'd like to thank you for watching this video and we'll catch you next time on the Smart Water Show. Thank <laughs> you.